welcome to Idle Chat. My name is Natalie Armstrong Moton, and I am pleased to be talking today, idly or otherwise. Always happy to talk to a colleague and friend, Deborah. Hi, Deborah. How are you? I'm great, Natalie. Always happy to be idly chatting with uh, many people. <laughs> Excellent. So, Deborah. Um, in Idle Chat, I have comprised a list of about 120 questions that are in-depth, <laughs> cutting-edge, journalistic inquiries. And I am just going to shuffle the deck of questions here, and then we will get started. All the right. card's marked, so I have to ask. Uh, you, you, can you see the barcode <laughs> on the back? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. If I were smart enough to mark cards, I wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> All right. The first question, uh, what is your favorite thing to cook or bake? Oh, wow. I, um, I, I don't do well with favorites because 10 different things uh, come to mind. But I'll, I'll use one that I uh, used at a holiday event to rave reviews, I make a bittersweet chocolate hazelnut tort at Christmas time. And it is decadent beyond words, but worth every ounce and every calorie. That sounds lovely. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds really <laughs> good. So are, do you like being in the kitchen? You're, you're quite handy in the kitchen? Uh, I do like being in the kitchen, but I consider kitchen work and cooking to be a team sport. So I'm not particularly fond of, oh, let me go into the kitchen and whip up a dinner for eight people all on my own. But, you know, as a team sport, I really do enjoy uh, working with fresh foods on the farm to table nut and uh, putting together fun things. Oh, goodness. What habit do you have now that you wish you had started much earlier in life? What habit do I have now that I wish I'd started earlier? Probably meditating. It's a, uh, it's a calming, uh, centering, gain some focus and perspective. Uh, and I think, gosh, if I'd just done that when I was you know, younger, way back when, it would have helped me in a number of ways. Miss Deborah, what artist or band do you always recommend when someone asks you for a music recommendation? Mm. Uh, let's see. U2 has been my sort of legacy life. Springsteen would be um, up there as well. So I don't, those always kind of things are hard for me, though, because I do kind of tailor it to the individual. Right. And have you seen either of those bands in concert? I have. I've seen them. Spring sing several times. You two only once. But yes. Did you rock and roller. Hey, why wouldn't oh, you? Well Life done. is short, man. Go see your bands. You can always you do go. it. Sure. Brooks Brothers, rock and roll. Side <laughs> by side. I like it. Absolutely. Uh, what is the hardest you've ever worked? Um, so back in the day, I'm so old, that when I did securities law and public offerings, um, we went to the financial printers in person. But none of this remote business. I mean, you literally packed up and went to the printers. And we had this deal that had to file. And we were up without sleep for like three nights in a row. It was ridiculous, probably not even that productive, but that's what we did. And I remember falling asleep while I was speaking. It was ridiculous. That was the hardest I've ever worked. Oh my gosh, you fell asleep mid-sentence. <laughs> right. Which just, that's, remember what I said about not being terribly productive? <laughs> it's kind of like, really? Come on. The, I mean, three days. That's enormous. Isn't that silly? But true story. I'm going hiking in the North Carolina mountains on Friday with one of those clients. So it's fun how those relationships survive and endure. Well, probably because they felt so sorry for you after you <laughs> fell asleep in the middle of a speech. No kidding. Right. They, they owe you a debt. Holy moly. Uh, next question. 
What game have you spent the most hours playing, do you think? Hearts, no question. In college, we played hearts nonstop. So if I've got a game of hearts coming up, you're the ringer I want to invite over. Absolutely. I'll All be right. there. Now I know. Now I know. You got it. Deborah on the list for the hearts. <laughs> yeah. All right. Imagine that you are moving to another country and you can only have one carry on. What are you going to pack with you? Mm. Well, there's my computer. Uh, there's a few books. I guess these days I wouldn't take photos because they would be digitized. Um, you know, I remember when I was uh, in my teens and traveling overseas, I was desperate for Dr. Pepper because it wasn't so readily available then, right? You know, now you can get pretty much anything anywhere. So um, I'm not coming up I'm not coming up really high with anything. I'd love to be in different new places and sample the local stuff. So I'd probably be traveling pretty light. Okay. Passport and a credit card. That's really all you need. <laughs> exactly. I mean, a smartphone. Yeah, you don't have to pack maps. You don't have to pack itineraries, phone books, uh, photo albums, reading material. It, it's all on your iPhone now. Yeah, and just enough clothes to go shopping in, right? <laughs> start yeah. over and depending where you land you not even that's necessary sometimes <laughs> what was cool when you were young but is definitely not cool now bell bottom oh. pants and big hair I spent hours, hours doing embroidery and applique on my bell-bottom jeans so that mine were different than everybody else's. And you had to have them just long enough so that in your stacked clogs, the bottom hit the pavement so they get all frayed. Frayed on the bottom. Now, I, I, as I uttered those words, I thought, what if they've come back in style and I don't know? <laughs> always a risk with me. <laughs> you know, I wear what I want to wear. Style, smile. You know, I wasn't cool then. I have, I'm not cool now. I don't think I was ever cool in the middle. So uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not the person that you should ask for that. that <laughs> well, advice. that goes double for me. <laughs> I have one style. This, I don't know. All right. Last question. Uh, what do you love most about the resolution industry? Um, so again, I never do just so the one. So the two things I like the most, one is I enjoy the work because whether it's being an arbitrator or a mediator, it's really helping other people solve their own problems. And I really enjoy that part of the work. And the other is the community. I have made such friendships just in the several years that I've been doing this and and it truly is a tribe and uh, hats off to the ABA uh, the dispute resolution section and wider in particular for creating just this really uh, great community of people I miss uh, convening in person but I'm thrilled and grateful for the fun cocktail hours and zoom calls we have together yeah, I, I will absolutely agree. Um, the resolution industry, we are some good folks. We are. We are some good folks. So, Deborah, if people want to reach out to you, do you have a, a website that they can find you? Absolutely. HiltonADR.com. Very and unique. It, <laughs> and and it, it's not Hilton like the hotel. It is not. It's Hilton with a Y. Some people get let the Y throw them and they think it has to be pronounced differently, but it's actually the old English spelling. So H-Y-L-T-O-N-A-D-R.com. Perfect. Thank you so much for having a little idle chat with me. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. What a great day to do it. Thanks so Thanks. much.